Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself and Marta. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for the support. I do run the channel alongside Paul, but I've just been doing a ton of editing the last few months for all the projects we've had going on. Uh, but Paul is off doing some big projects today, so it is down to yours truly to give you the latest on the RTX 3080 Ti. So, if you've been keeping your ear to the ground for all things RTX 3080 Ti the last few months, you'll know that... Well, things have been a bit up in the air, shall we say, with this particular GPU, with even the specs kind of shrouded in mystery. But we have a very interesting update for you today. So, judging by these reports, which was spotted by video cards, but was initially posted by Lock Lock over on Facebook, it does seem that the actual initial retail shipments to the 3080, excuse me, TI, 12 gigabyte graphics cards, have already commenced. So essentially what you can see in these images is the actual shipment labels themselves for these cards. Now, of course, these aren't the only cards being shipped, but you can see that it is an MSI Ventus 3X variant of the RTX 3080 Ti 12GB. But we can also see mentions of cards like the 3090, 3080, RX 580 and the GT 710. Now unfortunately there's no further details, obviously these are just shipping labels, but we can glean from this that the shipments to retailers have already begun. Now just as a refresher or as a piece of news, if perhaps you've missed one of our videos in the past, although of course I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We have been hearing that the 3080 Ti will be in May from our sources. Now, of course, you should always take anything unconfirmed with a pinch of salt TM, but we have been hearing May for the RTX 3080 Ti. So it does actually make sense that the shipments will begin now. Obviously, they want to get as much stock available so that we don't get a situation where all the stock is gone in about 0.5 seconds. Now, just as a bit of a refresher on the specifications for this card. Now, again, these are the rumored graphics card specifications, so do take everything here with a pinch of salt. You know, until you know Jensen or whoever comes out and says, "Yep, this is the card. This is the specs. This is the price." You should always take things as a rumor because that's what it is. Now, red tape out of the way. We are expecting to see it feature the GA102, of course which will have 10240 CUDA cores with a total of 80 SM units. As I've already said, it will feature 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and we're going to be seeing allegedly the same memory speeds as the 3080 vanilla at 19 Gbps. Naturally, of course, as we are getting 12 gigabytes, we are going to be seeing a different uh, bit interface for the memory, 38, sorry, 384 bit bus interface, which of course gives us a bandwidth of 912 gigabytes a second. Now, of course, the memory of the card is one of the things that has kind of fluctuated a fair bit. The initial rumors were, of course, that we would see a 20 gigabyte variant. So, if these specs hold out to be true, it is obviously an 8GB VRAM reduction over the previous specification, but the larger bus interface does, of course, drive that higher memory bandwidth. In terms of price, unsurprisingly, the rumours are not putting this thing as cheap at all, but that should come as a surprise to literally nobody ever. It's expected to do MSRP for around 999 US dollars, but as whether or not that should be available, the MSRP is a very, very different story, although we will get to that in just a moment. It's not exactly news at this point to say that the shortages and availability issues surrounding the graphics cards the last few months have kind of become a bit of a meme. But it does seem that Nvidia does have some plans up their sleeve to try and alleviate these issues for the soon to be released, or allegedly soon to be released, RTX 3080 Ti, but also the rest of the existing RTX 30 lineup. Now, obviously, the shortages are caused by numerous things. You know, the situation is extremely complex. Lots of moving parts, and it was essentially a perfect storm. But one of the things that is a component of that storm is definitely cryptocurrency mining. And it's this that NVIDIA are trying to strike back against for the RTX 3080 Ti and the rest of the RTX 30 lineup. So what are their plans, I hear you ask? Well, the RTX 3080 Ti will be getting revised Ampere GPUs that will actually tackle cryptocurrency mining, but again, the RTX 3080 lineup that's already out will also be getting revised cards that have been tweaked to basically 
not allow mining. So as you may know, there has been rumblings of this happening for a few weeks now, but thanks to Eagles Lab, we have got some new information, and of course you can find their article linked below. So they did some digging with the help of their sources at uh, various graphics cards manufacturers, and according to those sources, the initial batch of the RTX 3080 Ti was based on the GA102225A1 GPU, and it was still not fully protected against cryptocurrency mining. That GPU, in its current QS state, is still able to produce full hash rate performance in mining algorithms. But NVIDIA obviously weren't happy with this and decided to submit a newer Ampere GPU which should be known as GA102 22 star dash A1 and this is what's going to be mass produced for the RTX 3080 Ti instead of the SKU that I previously mentioned. It's already in mass production and will not work with any existing drivers. So basically they are baking it in from the ground up from the production point to block cryptocurrency mining on a software and hardware level for the launch of the RTX 3080 Ti. Now as I already said, mining is only one factor in the shortages, but blocking it this aggressively is definitely going to help. But as I mentioned earlier on in this particular segment, the 3080 Ti is not the only one getting this treatment. Now of course it's the only one that can launch this way, but still. Further, according to Eagles Labs information, the entire lineup is going to be getting a bit of a refresh to try and tackle this. The 3090, 3080, 3070, 3060 Ti and 3060. Now for those of you wondering, is it going to be possible for miners to circumvent this? And it seems like the answer is, well, not really. Or it's going to be a serious amount of work if it is eventually possible. Obviously, I'm not a fortune teller. But according to Eagle's sources, it is possible to flash the old GPU firmware onto the new 3080 Ti. But it comes with some serious caveats. NVIDIA has made it so that if users flash the 3080 Ti with older BIOS firmware, it would result in a black screen and vice versa. And that's because the new GPUs will actually come with a different hardware ID. So there's more parameters set up other than the GPU driver handshake that's going on that will actually prevent you know, them actually flashing it to a driver that doesn't have all of this stuff on it re regarding blocking cryptocurrency mining. So it does seem that there is some good news on the horizon for anyone who has only been met with frustration when trying to get their hands on an RCX 30 card without you know, paying sometimes 2 or 3x the price, which is just insane to me. But we're going to move on to our final topic of the day, which is some good news uh, for the PS5. So this information comes to us thanks to the MPD Group, who have released their full North American sales data for March 2021, and 2021 continues to just be an absolutely great year for the industry. Now we'll go into some more industry-specific stuff, but I want to focus for a moment on the PS5, given that I just mentioned it. So, while the Nintendo Switch was the top selling system once again, still reigning high in that throne, the PS5 is still off to a very good start indeed. It is the fastest selling console in US history over its first five months, both in terms of unit and dollar sales. And obviously this is with the supply heavily, heavily constrained. But elsewhere, they also shared that players spent a record 5.6 billion dollars on games and additional content as well as hardware in March. This is up 18% compared to the same period last year. Now they also shared some stuff about games which I don't want to go too much into but I will just give you the sort of top 20, sorry, the top five of March and also the best selling games of 2021. I'll give you the top five as well just because it's fun and interesting to know this kind of stuff or at least I think so. So the March top 5 is Black Ops Cold War, Monster Hunter Rise, Outriders, Super Mario 3D World and Spider-Man Miles Morales. As for the top 5 of the best selling games of 2021 thus far, it is Cold War, Super Mario 3D World, Miles Morales, Monster Hunter Rise and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So there you have it my friends. The PS5 has been on an absolute tear and we should probably expect more records to be broken as the shortages eventually, hopefully, fingers and toes crossed, start to ease. But that is me done for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. Enjoy the weather and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.